Uh, welcome back to the Australian Institute of International Affairs. Um, I'm ACT President Cam Hawker and I'm joined this evening by uh, Miles Cooper, who's a council member with us here at the ACT, just ahead of his presentation on the legacy of uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Um, Miles, it's great to talk to you um, this week, especially because, as you know, it's the 50th anniversary of the founding of Singapore. Um, I was wondering if we could start by just some broad reflections on how Singapore has changed in you know, your observation over that period. When was the first time you actually visited Singapore? Um, I first visited Singapore, was it 100 years ago? <laughs> no, I think uh, I was on my way to my first posting yeah. a very long time ago. Uh, I was going to Bangkok, and in mm. those days, Singapore was famous for having a uh, a very impressive array of shops on Orchard Road. Yes. And I was told uh, that they had quite lively nightlife as well. Hmm. Well, that, that hasn't entirely changed from my, <laughs> my experience. But it, it certainly wasn't a, an economic powerhouse yes, like it yeah, is today yeah. and uh, wasn't as significant in regional affairs, um, economic, security, defence, etc. as it is now. Yeah, and, and indeed the, the skyline, I suppose, has, has changed Absolutely. significantly in that time. Mm. Um, the legacy of, of Lee Kuan Yew, he's often, you know, rightly referred to as the father mm -hmm. of his nation. Um, how much was it his personal project, do you think? Well, he devoted his life to it. Yeah. And I think perhaps more than any other country I can think of, uh, he was a leader who shaped his own nation. Mm. Uh, the political system, uh, the structure of the economy, mm. uh, the social system, because uh, it's quite... Uh, regulated and, and controlled in various ways mm. and shaped. Um, and uh, certainly foreign policy and defense policy, they all bear his mark. Mm. And uh, I think um, it's a very impressive record. And uh, uh, his legacy uh, would be interesting to see how the Singapore that he shaped will cope with the challenges that it has ahead of it now. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, Lee Kuan Yew often justified the, uh, I guess, the the unique model of Singapore, some described as an authoritarian model, um, maybe in the first couple of decades on the grounds that Singapore was still developing and it wasn't the right time to adopt certain, you know, democratic um, practices. And, and later on, he's talked about Asian values. Is, is that something that is going to change in, in the post Lee Kuan Yew era or is that model just so firmly enmeshed now that it's not really up for debate? Well, he did put a lot of emphasis on discipline mm. and uh, creating a society which was robust both inter internally and uh, could be very robust in case of need vis-a-vis uh, -vis its neighbours. Mm. And part of that was, uh, I guess, occasioned by the circumstances of Singapore's creation when it was expelled out of Malaysia. Um, and then also there was the confrontation period with Indonesia. So perhaps it's not surprising that he sought to instill um, in his country and, the, and its people a bit of a siege mentality that mm. they had to be disciplined and not question too much mm. and work hard mm. uh, and uh, effectively mm. uh, to protect the nation. Mm. Um, but times have changed. Uh, is Singapore uh, under threat within its own region at this point? Um, I'd argue no. I mean, there are some bigger security challenges in the broader region. Um, and I think the, the nature of the population has changed as well. It's a more sophisticated electorate, mm. uh, more demand. It's a younger electorate now that wants to have a say in what goes on, not mm. just rely on Lee Kuan Yew's generation and the next generation. Mm. Um, and in various ways, whether it's uh, the political scene or uh, the economy or the social scene, mm. um, how Singapore operates uh, amongst its various communities. Right. Um, these are all going to be challenges for the for the future because mm. the, the, they're all been changing. Mm. Mm. You were obviously um, Australia's High Commissioner to Singapore. Did you have much personal interaction with Lee Kuan Yew during that time? Um, I did meet him a number of times, and I had the good fortune to accompany a number of our leaders, prime ministers and foreign ministers, and mm. who uh, who called on Lee. Mm. So. Uh, uh, my, my role in those discussions was very minor indeed, but um, I certainly got a chance to uh, see how uh, Lee um, 
uh, articulated his vision for Singapore yes. and how he commented on particularly foreign policy and, and regional affairs and uh, security issues. Yeah. He's very impressive. Yeah. I have to ask, I made the obvious question, um, his most famous quote on Australia was a fairly derogatory one. I think he described Australia as either being or at risk of becoming the white trash of Asia. Do you think that is a view that changed over the years or did that reflect Lee Kuan Yew's you know, real, real view of Australia? I gather it did reflect his real view at the time, and it was rather patronising. Yes. And uh, dare I say it, um, I think probably there are some aspects of our scene at that time mm. um, which made it perhaps not an implausible comment to, to, to make. Mm. Um, I mean, all countries underperform, including Singapore, including Australia. Mm. But there have been times when economically and politically uh, we weren't doing that well. Mm. And uh, maybe there was a sense of complacency or an inability to get reforms moving mm. uh, that ran the risk for Australia and in Lee's eyes as well of, uh, of us falling behind uh, the, the region, which was, was growing pretty fast. Yes, absolutely. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Um, yep. Sorry, I'll just add, no, I'll please add, do. add to that one that uh, uh, later, in fact, while I was High Commissioner there, he made a visit to Australia and uh, yes. I was able to accompany him on part of that visit. And uh, I, I had a sense that since he hadn't been to Australia for a while, his eyes were opening up and he was evaluating what was in some ways a new Australia for him. Mm. Part of that was the the changed ethnic makeup of contemporary Australian society. Yes. Part of it was the uh, the vigour of the the debate about issues, um, um, <clears throat> and um, part of it was the the strong economic growth we'd mm. had. Mm -hmm. um, so I gather, and uh, it's it's actually quite difficult to find out anything that uh, happens in the cabinet room in in Singapore. Yes. But I gather quite reliably that uh, when he came back, he did. Uh, give his colleagues a bit of a lecture ah. and say that uh, Australia has changed ah. and uh, that it was a country that uh, now at least um, it was worth engaging with. So that was that was encouraging. Oh, excellent. And, and it shows that uh, at least on one or two things he, he was prepared to change his mind. Well, there's some fascinating insights there. All right. Well, thank you very much, Miles. Um, for more information, you can visit our website at www.internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you. Thanks, Cameron.